Welcome to the City of Greater Dandenong's exhibition, Reading, Writing and Arithmetic, Early Education in the City of Greater Dandenong. My name is Alison and today's video will delve into the early history of education in Victoria and the City of Greater Dandenong. This exhibition draws upon photographs from major collecting institutions, including the National Archives of Australia, Museums Victoria, Dandenong and District Historical Society and the State Library of Victoria. During the first part of the 19th century, Australian children did not have a childhood like today. Education was not seen as being overly important. If they did attend school, children could be withdrawn from school by their parents whenever they needed them. This exhibition explores the beginnings of education in the city of Greater Dandenong, tracing the history from the 1800s up until the present day, including Laurel Lodges of Private College, State Schools Number 1403 Dandenong, and 1466 Keysborough, as well as one of Dandenong's most famous students, Oscar Ashe. In 1851, Victoria became an independent colony separate from New South Wales, but it kept the same school system of publicly funded schools overseen by the Denominational School Board and the National School Board. However, schooling was still a luxury that the poorest families could not afford. There were no laws that required children to attend. At seven, they could be sent to prison and at, at age 14 for girls, 16 for boys, they could be married with parental consent. An introduction of the Common Schools Act 1862, also known as an Act for the Better Maintenance and Establishment of Common Schools in Victoria, saw the Victorian Parliament abolish the two existing school boards and create a single board of education and the implementation of common schools across Victoria. On the 1st of January 1873, the Educational Act 1872 Victoria removed state funding of non-government schools and created a new education department to control government schools. This meant the children between the ages of 6 and 15 were obliged to attend school and their education would be free. Victoria was the first colony in Australia and one of the first in the world to introduce free, compulsory and secular education for children. Education in the 19th century was very different to modern education. Children of all ages were often taught in one classroom and they most commonly learnt by repetition. The Education Act 1872 Victoria stated that children must be educated in reading, writing, arithmetic, grammar, geography and drill, plus gymnastics if practical. On top of this, girls were also taught sewing and needlework. Private education often included the learning of languages, most commonly French and German. Punishment was a frequent occurrence, often by the schoolmaster, and for a variety of reasons, including misbehaviour, rudeness, laziness, lying and being left-handed. The most common punishment was the cane, a rod most likely made from birchwood, which was used to cane students on their backside for boys and on their hands or legs for girls. The dunce hat was another form of punishment, often used as a tool of humiliation. Students would be forced to sit in the corner for an hour wearing a hat labelled with the word dunce, which meant a person who was considered slow at learning or not very smart. Break times were the only time students could relax and play. Common schoolyard games of the time period included marbles, one of the most popular toys in the Victorian era, skipping ropes and playing hoops, which involved children rolling a hoop around the playground for as long as possible without it falling over. In the late 1850s, as Dandenong grew as a settlement, there was a small school approximately two miles outside of the township across the Umerian Creek as well as a brick-built denominational school on the corner of Langhorn and Wilson Street, which was completed in 1857. On the 18th of April 1873, a public meeting of residents was held and a letter drafted to the minister urging him to have a state school erected in the town of Dandenong. By the 25th of November 1873, the plans for a brick-built state school were ready and on the 4th of May 1874, Dandenong's first state school, number 1403, opened on the corner of Robinson and Foster Streets, 
Less than a week before denominational school number 186 was closed in preparation for the opening of the new school. It did not take long for the building to prove inadequate as a school. It was overcrowded, 229 students by mid-1877 and exposed to the elements. By 1878 Dandenong Railway Station opened which caused more issues for the school as the children would often go running to see the station to see the trains. By May 1880 the recommendation to construct a new school was adopted and the brick-built Foster Street School opened on the 4th of March 1881. As the number of students grew, new brick rooms were added in both 1901 and 1909 and by 1960 there were 760 students with 17 classes in 15 rooms. 140 years later, State School No. 1403 still, still stands. It is now known as Dandenong Primary School. In 1861, Keysborough had one private-run school run in the Wesleyan Church. The first teacher was Mr Pike, however between 1866 to 1869 there was no teacher at the school due to the families in the district employing governesses instead. On the 12th of January 1869, a local committee was granted aid by the Board of Education under the Common Schools Act 1862 for a non municipal school in Metropolitan District No. 3, County of Burke, to be built on half an acre, purchased for five pounds, four miles southwest from Dandenong, five miles southeast from Springvale, five miles east from Mordialic. This school became known as Common School No. 1013, and by 1st of July 1869, there were 37 children enrolled from grades 1 to 4. However, it was still being held in the church hall. The Keysborough residents were now becoming anxious to have a purpose-built schoolhouse, and as a community, they were successful in both raising the funds and securing a site for it to be built. In 1874, following the implementation of the Educational Act of Victoria, Keysborough State School No. 1466 opened in a brick-built, shingle-roofed schoolhouse. A three-room teacher's residence was also completed, with a fourth room added in 1878. In October 1934, the school had 62 children enrolled and an extra wooden classroom was added. This temporary classroom was removed in 1949 when student enrolment numbers had dropped. Electricity was connected and first used at the school in 1950 and in 1974-75 a tennis court was constructed followed by a netball court in 1983-84. In 1985, the school's first three computers were purchased. Keysborough State School No. 1466 closed in 1993 and is now a private residence. Matilda Shaw emigrated from Derbyshire, United Kingdom to Australia with her parents and five siblings at age 16 in 1857. In 1870, she rented Laurel Lodge in Dandenong, first from Robert Huxon and then in 1872 from James Leckie, where she established a private boarding college. Miss Shaw's college taught all the schools that were considered necessary for a refined young lady of the 19th century. English, French, German, music, singing, drawing, painting and needlework. It was often referred to as a ladies college, which was incorrect. In 1875, there were 13 female and 4 male students, as well as 2 female teachers. Miss Shaw was known to be a strict disciplinarian, and student Oscar Ash had difficulties with her from the start. He was often caned, and his autobiography remembers Miss Shaw as a hard-faced martinet who thrashed me day in, day out, or without reason. In 1884, Miss Shaw moved her school to the newly built two-storey house on the corner of Langhorn and Wilson Street, called Merlin. In 1888, the Jubilee History of Victoria and Melbourne describes the school as a growing rapidly in favour and as one of the leading boarding schools in the colony. In 1899, 
the school was closed when Miss Shaw married James Facey, a blacksmith. They lived together at Merlin until Matilda passed away in 1912, aged 71. Oscar Ash was born in January 1871. In 1878, he started his education at Miss Shaw's private college at Laurel Lodge, Dandenong. From Laurel Lodge, Oscar transferred to St James Grammar School and from 1884 to 1887, he attended Melbourne Grammar School. Around 1890, following his education, he decided to enter the theatre and travel to Norway and then London to study for the stage. In London in 1893, he had his first stage role at Opera Comique in Man and Woman and then joined the F.R. Benson Company, where over the next eight years he appeared in more than a hundred roles. In 1899, he married fellow actress Lily Brayton and in 1904, they joined Otho Stewart in the managing of the Adelphi Theatre putting on numerous Shakespeare's productions. In 1907, Lily and Oscar went into management of His Majesty's Theatre before taking the company on an Australian tour between 1909 and 1910. Oscar wrote the book and lyrics to the play Chu Chin Chow in two weeks, as well as directing and starring in it opposite his wife. This ran in London for five years breaking numerous records between 1916 to 1921. Oscar Ash died aged 65 in the United Kingdom of a coronary thrombosis. By 1900, there were 6,900 state schools in the Australian colonies to service a population of 3.8 million. A total of four schools were established in the Greater Dandenong area in the first half of the 20th century. This included Springvale Railway School No. 3507, which opened in 1905. This was first in a Wesleyan church hall before moving into a newly built school on Springvale Road in 1912. It is now known as Springvale Rise Primary School. In 1911, Noble Park State School No. 3675 opened, with students taught in a rented hall. By 1917, with 100 students enrolled, the Education Department built a two-room timber schoolhouse on land donated by Frank Buckley. It is now known as Noble Park Primary School. The eight-classroom, brick-built Dandenong West State School No. 4217 opened on a two-acre site in 1925 with an enrolment of 229 pupils and led by two women, Mrs Murray and Mrs Downey. Land for an oval was bought in 1952 and in the 1950s-60s more classrooms were added, bringing the total number to 23. It is now known as Dandenong West Primary School. At the turn of the century, schooling was only offered to a small minor minority of young people and secondary education was not yet implemented. It was noted in 1910 by a Commonwealth statistician that the average boy or girl simply leaves the state school at the age of 14 or thereabouts and the state school apparently no longer concerns itself with them. The first government secondary school to come to the region was Dandenong High School. A site was selected for the construction of the school in 1918, prior to the foundation stone being laid in November 1919. The school opened on the 1st of November 1920, becoming the 29th state high school. It is still in operation today. Over the years, new innovative practices were introduced to support the region's growing multicultural community. In the late 1970s, the Ethnic Teacher Aids Program was established at Springvale Primary School, previously Springvale Railway School, to support students migrating from other countries who did not speak English. As a result of this program, the Victorian government developed the Ethnic Teachers Aid in Schools Program. 
It is still running today, now known as the Multicultural Education AIDS Program. Between the 1950s to the early 1980s, the Greater Dandenong area saw a drastic increase in the number of schools. It gained 24 government schools and 10 government secondary schools in the span of 20 years. The 2016 census revealed that 31.1% of the people in the city of Greater Dandenong were attending an educational institution, 22.6% in primary school, 19.7% in secondary school, and 24.7% in the tertiary or technical institution. Thank you for joining me today on our journey through the very early days of education in the city of Greater Dandenong.